Okay, we've got uh, five people and it's just after 12, so we might make a start. Do a quick sound check. Is the sound coming through okay? Okay, thanks, Byron. And we're on week eight this week. Um, okay, so just a reminder, we, we've, I've talked about this a lot in class, especially, especially lately. But every instance class you create or every data class you create, it's like baking a cake. You just follow a recipe. So you add your constant static fields. If you have any threshold values or maximums, minimums, array sizes, make those constants at the top. Uh, add any private instance fields you need. And then add constructors. So you get your default constructor, parameterized constructors. You might have multiple parameterized constructors. Add your mutators, excesses, two string, and any other methods you need. Okay, so that's sort of like baking a cake for every every data class or every instance class you create. They're the sort of things you want to be doing. Okay, so just follow the recipe. <laughs> and, um, some applies to the assignment, of course. Assignment two. Um, so I've got some short answer questions in the chat. Anyone have a go at this one? Describe how two dimensional arrays might represent a table of data. And we've also got the differences between an array and an array list. So this isn't the main difference, but see if you can come up with many differences or several differences. Just see if you can do that. So I'm watching the chat window, see if anyone wants to join in. Any answers to those questions? about array versus array list. How are they different? How are they the same? Question says for the main difference, but let's talk about, see if we can find any more differences than just one. Okay, nobody. Can everyone see the screen okay? Is that coming through okay on the, on the, on the video? Can you see my mouse pointer? <laughs> There's supposed to be six people out there. Zoom says it's sharing okay. I'm assuming it's coming through. Gee, it's like uh, it's like talking to an empty class at the moment. <laughs> so if you can please join in, that would help a lot. Yes, there's a nose even, or it's like I'm talking to an empty room at the moment. Very off, very off-putting, very disconcerting. Anyway, describe two-dimensional arrays. How do they re represent a table of data? Any ideas there? The difference between an array and array list. Any any ideas there? Anybody? Okay, 2D array, 2D array. Remember it's a grid of rows and columns. A grid of pigeonholes, rows and columns. Okay, and that's basically a table of data. It's like having a worksheet in an Excel spreadsheet. So it's like having a single worksheet, 2D worksheet in a spreadsheet, in Excel or any other spreadsheet. That's what a 2D array is. Okay, I'll get you started on the next one. What's the difference between an array and array list? Well, array lists, they're dynamically, dynamically resizable. 
when the, when your array list needs to grow in size, Java takes care of it automatically behind the scenes. What else? Come on, let's get some let's get some 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 discussion going. <laughs> array. How do you declare an array? How do you declare an array list? How are they different? Okay, we might leave that one. There's, uh, there's no interest, so we'll just move on. Um, we're getting quite late in the term now, week eight, so I've got, to, I've got to sort of slow down on, you can't hear anything. Okay, Sanjian says, Sanjian says I, I can't hear anything, and then he says, I can. Can you just clarify, Sanjian, can you hear? Oh, okay, his internet connection's unstable. Okay, but your chat window's working fine, so keep, keep, keep stuff coming through in the chat window. Can everyone else hear me okay? Byron said he could. Anybody else got audio problems or can't hear me? There's nothing in the chat window. Okay, okay, so Andrew can he be fine, that's right. So Andrew just said this one. Um, so I'll just put that in here. Andrew said arrays can contain primitive and objects, but array lists can only have objects. And that's exactly right. Well done, we haven't actually talked about that too much. So arrays, array lists can only contain reference types or objects, which is quite right. Whereas array lists can contain primitive types and reference types. Well done, thank you for that, Andrew. That's very good. That's Andrew. So thanks for that, Andrew. And you're, you're quite right. What about your, the way you, do, you declare them? So when you declare an array, you go um, string brackets names equals new string and when you do an array list you go array list string al equals new string new array list string okay so can anyone spot any differences there? <laughs> what about imports? Do you need any imports for arrays? Do you need any imports for array list? Okay. So you can see there's quite a few differences there. So arrays use, use square brackets to declare. Array list data type to declare. So we've got another difference. Okay. Arrays you must size when you declare array lists, you don't have to know the size. So here I'm not providing any size. Okay, so arrays are not resizable. If you want to, if you want to create a larger array, if you run out of locations, you need to you need to declare a new array in memory, copy all the data over, and then change your reference back to point back to the new array. Okay, so you've got the resized array. So, but the original array can't actually resize in, in size. Okay. Ah, beautiful, Andrew, you're thinking nicely here. So more from Andrew, Andrew's the star at the moment. So array lists, she used size, add, delete, and those sort of methods. And um, and of course with arrays, you, um, you, 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 you see the um, 
no methods involved really, unless you start talking about the arrays class, and that's that's a different thing entirely. Okay, so Andrew's Andrew's on fire here. Thank you, Andrew. Um, um, so how how do you get the size of an array? How do you get the size of an array list? Can you remember? So we've got the we've got the size of a, size gives you size or, or number of items. Array list. How do you get the size of an array? Beautiful. Thank you, Byron. Byron's got it there. He's on fire. So you use the array name dot length for the array size. That's exactly right. Okay, so you can see there um, length. No, no, it's uh, it's it's the property. You're quite right, Byron. Byron, it was a, it was just a length property. It's not a method, so don't, don't put round brackets there. Okay, so it's, <laughs> you're quite right. What, what you said was quite right. Um, okay, so you can see without, uh, <laughs> yeah, habit from Python, understandable, yeah. It is hard, uh, and of course with strings, it's string.length. So if you've got name, if you've got a string called name, it's name.length, that's round brackets, because it's a method. So it's it's easy to actually make, make a mistake and put round brackets there, but that's, that's not allowed. <laughs> okay, so we, we don't know much about array lists, but already we've got one, two, three, four, five, six differences. Perfect, thank you, Andrew. Andrew, there you go. So, so Andrew's got, you have to import Java utils at array list. Yep, so lowercase j actually, but yeah, it's easy to. So, if, if, if it must import. So before we can use array lists, you must do that import. And with array says no imports. Use them straight away. Okay, so that's excellent. What, you, what you've done there is excellent. And we've got um, a whole bunch of differences there. So the, the question said, what's the main difference? And the main difference I would have to say is that array lists are dynamically resizable. And arrays aren't. Okay. Um, but of course, there's a whole lot of differences there. Even though we've only done array lists this week, you've, you've come up with a whole bunch of array lists. So that's, that's excellent work, I'd say. Well done, thank you guys for joining in, Byron and, uh, and Andrew. So, so if this is an exam question and uh, you're trying to think of what the differences were, um, you know, it's always good to think of examples. Think of an example and how are they different? Okay, so this one you've got to use square brackets, this one you don't. This one, you've got to say the data type up here. Uh, and this one, you say the data type here after the new. Okay, so it's all differences there. We haven't even mentioned those yet. So there's all nitty gritty differences between how they're declared and, and whether you specify the size or not. And with array lists, we did talk about it briefly in, in the class, but you can actually specify the array, the size. So you could say 1,000 if you wanted to, or you could specify a million. That just gives Java a starting point as to how big the array list should be. Okay, but you don't have to do that. You can leave that out and Java will just keep resizing as it needs behind the scenes. Okay, so very good. Thank you, for, thank you, Byron and Andrew for joining in. Um, okay, on to question two. So create a, a class called dog, which has two instance variables dog name and dog age, a default constructor, parameterized constructor, get and set methods. And uh, so that's what, we'll, that's what we'll do so far. We'll do that. Okay. So I'll create a dog class. So I've got the question copied over here just to save us. Uh, I'll tabbing back some forwards or changing tabs. So we need um, dog name and dog age. And we need a default constructor and a parameterized constructor. So if anyone can do those, default and parameterized constructor, if you can do, do, do either of those, that'd be great. And don't forget that this shortcut, save yourself a bit of code. And if anyone wants to do the a get or a set method for any of those bits of data, dog name, dog age, please do. Paste it into the, uh, into the chat window and I'll put it straight in here and give you full credit. Okay. I'll, I'll go and make a quick start on the class.
string of name. And we want a, a default constructor. Parameterized constructor. constructor. We want the accessor methods. Mutators. If you can supp supply any of those, that'd be awesome. Let's go back up and quick check the question quickly. This is variables, dog name, dog age. We've done that. Default and parameterize and get and set methods. That's all it says. Okay, so we're just following our normal recipe here. So if anyone can provide any of those methods, that'd be great. Okay, there's probably people typing. <laughs> so let's let's start with the parameter. I, I always start with a parameterized constructor, parameterized dog. Let's go up here and I go copy. Name. I, I tend to like putting a name first before the age. It's just my personal preference. I don't know why. <laughs> just feels better, feels right. Oh, here we go. Andrew's done a whole lot of code here. Let's copy that in and see how that looks. So we've got the the uh, the, the dog. The default constructor there and the parameterized constructor. <laughs> that's all right, yeah, you've got some semicolons, that's all right. That's all good. And, and whether you like having a curly bracket there or, or there, like I, I can see Andrew likes it there, that's fine. I, I, I tend to like putting mine there, but so I've just little things quite a bit. So this is thanks to Andrew. Special thanks. And this is special thanks to Andrew. And, and so remember that remember our trick for using the this operator. We can use our this operator to, to call this constructor. Just say it's just duplicating code. Imagine there was lots of validation rules here and lots of validation rules here. We can make it so one constructor calls the other. So we'll do that. We'll do that as well. So we'll just comment that code out. And you can go this null comma zero. If you wanted to, or if you want to initialize dog name to something, even a blank string, you could go double quote, double quote. Okay. So this this constructor here now calls this one. And don't forget it's uppercase D. It's got to match your class name, uppercase D. Uppercase D. But you're typing quick, I know. That's all right. Okay, that's all good. So Andrew's done very well. Who can uh, who can do an accessor or a mutator? I, I, I can tell, I'm just going through the list of names in the class. I can tell Wayne's not here because Wayne would be all over this. And he did say he'd be missing this week's class. So uh, if Wayne was here, he'd be joining him like crazy as well. Thanks. Let's spell thanks, right? Thanks. Okay, let's do one of the accessor methods. Public something. Get dog name. Doesn't need anything to do with its work. Are there any parameters needed? And what are we going to do here? We're going to return something. What are we going to return? And then we've got the same for dog age. Dog age. So dog name is a string. Okay, up here, dog name is a string. So it's going to return a string and it's going to be called dog name. Okay, dog age is an int. Aha, here we go. And we've got the mutators there from Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, beautiful. So let's have a look at that. 
So we've got this dot dog name equals dog name, perfect. And also, oh, he's got the accesses as well. Return and the set dog age. And get dog name. So you had all of them there. Well done. Okay, I didn't see that first one. I, I tend to like putting my accesses together in a group and then the mutators. Uh, but if you put the accessor and the mutator for the same data item and a nexus and mutator for the same data item, that's fine as well. Group them however you like, as long as they're grouped some way, not just randomly thrown into the class. That's, that's all good, but that's great. What, what um, Andrew's done there is, is great. So again, special thanks to Andrew. So um, he's doing all the work so far. Okay, so, so this code here is basically the same as what's in our constructor. It's just that line of code, the FML, our parameterized constructor. And this code here is the same as our parameterized constructor for dog age, dog age. Okay, so if there's any validation rules needed, we would do the validation here for those fields and also down in here and also down in here. Okay, so if dog name couldn't be blank, if it had to start with an alphabetic character, if it had to be at least three characters long, all that sort of stuff, we'd put all those rules here and here. Um, if we had a third or a fourth Java course, we'd start talking about this sort of thing of how to optimize your code and uh, good practices. But for now, we're just gonna duplicate the same code multiple places. Okay. Um, one thing I like doing as well is I like putting a, a comment on that closing brace for the class. So I'll go do that. It just shows that that's where your class ends. It's not a bad thing to do as well. That still looks pretty good. So control one, everything's compiling fine. Special thanks to Andrew for everything. <laughs> well done. Okay, so we've done the first part, that's all done. Okay, so part D onwards. Create another class called, in the same folder called dogs. In the dogs, create an array of three dogs objects. In the dogs class constructor, populate the array using the new and the parameterized constructor and uh, create Fido, Rover and Difa. Okay, so we have two classes. We have the dog class and the dogs class. The dogs class has got the array in it. Okay, so we're, we're moving into the, into the territory now of multi-class multi projects where the uh, other classes aren't just a tester class. Okay, so let's create a new file. Public class dogs. And then save it. Dogs.java. Dogs.java, beautiful. And the question says, I might copy these across. Okay, so create a, a constructor to populate the array, to clear an array of three dogs. So let's create the array of three dogs. Um, private dog. So we're creating an array, so dog square brackets. Dogs, we can call it dogs, it's lowercase, it doesn't match the class name. Or else if you want to call it dogs array, that's great as well. Either one's fine. Eagles new dog. We could do that if we wanted to. Do you know how I love constants and things declared at the top? So let's do that. Let's let's do it the proper way. So we'll make a constant at the top of you. It can be public or private because it's a constant. Doesn't matter if we share it outside the class. Public, static, final, max size equals three. And of course it's an integer, so int. Okay, and we'll use that for our array size there. That way if you need to change three to a 20 or whatever later on, it's very easy to do. It's at the top of the class, it's very visible. And you have to go through all your code, changing all the threes to whatever. Okay, in the dogs class constructor, 
populate the array using a new and the parameterized constructor of the dog class. Okay, so let's do that. Let's create a, con a dogs constructor, a public dogs. So it's public followed by the class name. Populate the array. Okay. Now, quite often you'll see this sort of thing as well. You'll see Okay, so you declare the array up here as class data, but you actually create it down here in your constructor. And that's good practice as well. Okay, it, it really has the same effect. Every time you create a dog's object, either way the, the array will be created. So, so that's fine. Okay, or if you want to do it inside your constructor, that's fine as well. Either, either way is fine. Okay, but let's create the, the dogs in the array. So for, we don't need a for loop really because we're not getting user input. It's not going to give us any advantages. So dogs array square brackets zero, the first dog equals new dog. We're calling the dog class parameterized constructor. I'm going to pass in Fido and the age. So dog name and the age getting passed through to the, the dog class constructor. We're just calling this constructor over here. Okay. So we've done that for the first doggy. Now we can do it for the other two. One and two. And it's Rover. Let's close that output window. Rover and eight. And Difa and two. Okay, so in the dogs class constructor, populate the array, which is what we've done. Using a new and a parameterized constructor and use these data fields or data values. So we've populated our array, okay, with hard-coded data. We could we also be reading this in from file or database or wherever. Uh, in week 11, we do file IO, so we can change it later on in week 11 to read some file if we wanted to. Okay. Create a main method in the dogs class and create an object of type dogs. Okay, so let's do that. We'll put our main method in here for now. We're going to move it shortly. Static void main string square brackets. Args. Okay, so I'm going to throw this out to the to the crowd again. Uh, can anybody create a dogs object for me? And then we also want to create a method to display the dogs that are in the array. Okay, so we want to display dogs method in here public whatever display dogs whatever so right here we want to display all the dogs in the array so how do we do that so if anyone could fill those details in that'd be great and also mains a main uh, declaration down here for the dogs array dogs what equals new what and uh is there anything we need to do after here? And what sort of brackets do we need? Do we need round brackets or square brackets? What do we do? And then something dot display dogs. That's what we're looking to fill in. So if anyone can provide those parts, that'd be great. And the dogs declaration and the, the calling of the dogs display method. That'd be great. <laughs> Andrew's doing all the work for everybody. Come on, everyone. There's other people here. Let's join in. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. You're doing a great job. Display dogs. Okay, so int i equals zero, isis and dogs dot length. Don't forget your I plus plus. Easy to do. <laughs> I'm trying. I understand Byron. Yeah, he's, I'm trying, but he's too fast. Exactly. So uh, maybe you could jump, jump ahead to do this part. If, if um, Andrew could just slow down a little bit for a second, and uh, maybe you could do that part. These parts down here. Yeah, I understand Byron. I know. I know. I know other people are probably trying as well. Um, okay. So. A couple of little typos here. It's uppercase system, it's lowercase i. Okay, that's not too bad. That's all going looking pretty good. And it's 
dogs dogs are right i dot dot get name dot get dog name dot so there's a few dots there but everything's very close you're 99 percent there smart quotes nothing you can do about that that's just what they get typed in in the, in the window <laughs> it's all looking pretty good Ah, uh, yes, Andrew said he's typing in Word and they, a little auto happens. Yep, understand completely. <laughs> no worries. Um, there's an I plus set plus there and a, and a dot and a dot and just fix up the smart quotes, but everything else is spot on. Great, lowercase i for int, but that's Word for you. <laughs> um, good. So, I see array subscript, so that's what's getting used here. And uh, we're displaying the dog is, that's all good. Thank you, thank you, uh, Andrew. And uh, special thanks to Andrew. Okay, so with the display dogs method done. Uh, uh, we've got it here. I've got it, I added here at the uh, at the end of the loop. So we, every time through the loop, we add one to I. Yeah. Okay, so dogs, dogs equals new something, dogs. We're creating an instance of our dogs array class. And what do we do here? Is it square brackets? Is it round brackets? Is it square brackets with a number in? Is it round brackets with a number in? What do we do? Because this is an array, don't forget. The dogs class is an array. So do we need to provide a size? And do we need to use square brackets here? Anybody got any thoughts there? Okay, so the, the size of the array and, and the fact that it's an array is internal to the class. Anything outside of the class shouldn't need to know worry, shouldn't need to worry about how three dogs are stored. It's just it should know that it's, the class is capable of storing three dogs. So it's like a black box. We don't need to know how things work internally. So here we don't need to provide any square brackets or round brackets or anything, any numbers inside there. Okay, so if you did, if you did that, that'd be wrong. If you tried to say that, that we're trying to make an array of an array of dogs, and that's not going to work for us at this stage. Okay, so just that that's the plain old declaration. We don't know, from outside the class, we don't need to know how the dogs array class works, uh, which you just need to know that it can store so many dogs and that we've got so many methods we can call, for example, display dogs and a constructor. So it's just what, what the public interface is. Okay, and then to call the display dogs method, we go our dogs object dot display dogs, and there's nothing in round brackets, nothing in round brackets here. Okay, so that's that should be it. Control one, control two, and there's our dogs coming out. Uh, a little bit of space in the fix up, but that's looking pretty good. Rover, Diva, the data's coming out correct. That's all great. So we can put a bit of a space in here. Okay, control one, control two, and that's looking a little bit better again. Okay, um, now imagine we had a, Imagine we had a whole lot of fields, dog name, dog age, uh, dog favorite foods, um, dog maximum age, dog breed, all that sort of stuff. Um, we, wouldn't have to do, we wouldn't have to call these methods for each data field. So let's change things slowly and we'll add a two string method in here. Okay, so two string method is something you'll, you'll, you'll often add to your classes. And we'll use that to get the string representation of the data, which is Takes us calling these methods. We can shorten our dogs array class code down by making our dog array, uh, our dog class a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more functional. Okay, so we're going to try and shrink this code down here to just one line. Okay, it's not a big change, we've only got two fields, but imagine we had lots of fields. We needed to get this, get that, get that. 
Okay, so let's let's add a two string, and that's an accessor method. So I'll put it up here with the accessor methods public string two string. Return dog name plus help plus dog h. Okay, so we'll just call, we'll make it so our two string methods invoked. So go back over here to dogs, and we can also put this in front if we want to. Um, in fact, let's do that for starters. Let's let's use that for starters. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll return. Um, Andrew's original text. Okay. And now over here we can just go dogs array dot two string. Okay. And we don't need to worry about getting getting the value of the fields. Okay, so we're shorting our shortening our dogs array class down by adding power into our dog array, in, into our dog class. Okay, so let's run that and compile. Control one, control two. And you see everything's still working perfectly. Okay, so we're just calling the two string method for each item in our, for each dog in our dog array. And we've seen the power, the power of two string in our previous classes. We can actually take that out. Control X. And so we're printing a dog to the screen and Java's gonna go looking for a two string method automatically. Okay. So we'll come over here and automatically run this two string method because it's got the right fingerprints. It's public, it's string, and it's called two string. So Java will automatically look for that and find it automatically. Control one, control two, and you can see there it is happening automatically. Okay, we've seen that in previous classes. Now I do like putting the dot two string in there. I like having it so it's uh, complete and obvious what's going on, but you, but you could leave it out if you wanted to. Okay, so we've got the dog we've got the dog class, which stores data for a single dog. Okay, and I name first and dog name age doesn't really matter. I'm just pretty fussy about how my data. <laughs> I've got issues, I know. Um, so we've got the dog the dog uh, uh, class here, which stores data for a single dog. We've got a, a default constructor, a parameterized constructor. We've got the the get name, the get dog age, and the two string accessor methods. And we've got the set dog name and set dog age mutator methods. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. So, so the dog, sorry, so the dog class. So the dog class stores a single dog, and the dogs class stores an array of dogs. Okay, so we're setting up our array here. We're initializing the array in the constructor. And we've got the display dogs method. Then we've got a main program that declares an object of type dogs. So in other words, an object of type the array class. And then we can say dogs.display dogs. So we don't need to tell what size, we don't need to worry about how the dogs are stored. We just know there's a dogs constructor and there's a display dogs method. So is there any questions on that so far? No questions so far? Any confusion anywhere? Anyone needs me to go over anything again? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna make, we're gonna extend this example a lot now. We're gonna add a whole lot of features into it. Okay, so let's go back to my notes over here on my first file. And um, so we've already done that one. We've added, added a two string method to our, our, our dog class. Let's also change the dogs class so that we're using an array list. Okay, so we need to change some code in here to make it so it works with an array list instead of an array. Okay, so we need to do an import. We need to change something here. We need to change some stuff here. Change some stuff here and here. So you need to change a lot of things, but it's not big changes. Okay, so if anyone can fill in any of the gaps, any of the question marks, uh, if you wanna provide that bit of code there, uh, it's probably a good idea for anyone who's 
Uh, not a super fast type like Andrew to maybe jump ahead and do that, that part, because you can bet Andrew's going to do these ones up here. He'll have the answer before I've even finished speaking, probably. <laughs> Anybody want to do those or one of those? And I'll copy and paste the others. Okay, so we're going to change this so it uses an array list. Okay. So I'll pause for a second to give people time to type. Okay, so Andrew said uh, import Java util dot star. Yep, that's, that's fair enough. Um, you can put dot array list there if you want to, and uh, but it doesn't really matter. And just sorry, that was my mistake. Just one import. Okay, so we need to change how our array is declared. And we need to change how our data is initialized in the array. And we need to change our loop. Anyone can provide the new code, that'd be great for any part of that. And we probably don't need our size anymore either. We could probably take that out. There's no point initializing an array list to three because it's initialized more than it anyway and it's got room to expand. Okay, so let's come down here. I'll do, I'll do this part. Want to fill in those gaps there. Okay, so there's bits and pieces there. If you want to type them in, that'd be great. Not much action, so I'll, I'll go ahead and, so that's the add method you need to add data to into an array list to add. Okay, so, so we, need a, we need a bunch of ads. Okay, and a new dog Rover, and new dog Difa. Okay, so we're adding data into our, our array list, adding dogs in. When you declare the array list, you have to supply the type of data that you're storing. Perfect. Yep. So Andrew's got the the uh, the array list declaration there. Thanks, Andrew. Oh, it's an array of dog, <laughs> array list of dog, <laughs> not dogs. Dogs is the own class. We'd be creating an array of ourselves. So we want to create an array list of dog. That's right. Very good. Okay. So, so make sure it's not dogs. <laughs> and I showed you the shortcut in that you can do with Java 7. You can actually leave this second one out if you want to, okay? It still looks strange to me, so I always put it in. But if you want to leave that second one out, you can. But you still need the chevrons, so less than greater. So new dog, so I've got the, the data changed over, the array changed over, the storage. We're now adding data into our array list. 
just need to change our loop. So how do you tell the size of an array list? How do you tell the size, anybody? Size, perfect, thank you, Andrew. And we need to get the data out of the array list for each row in the array list or each item in the array list. How do we get the data out of an array list? And Byron too, thanks Byron. They came through together. Okay, so how do we get the data out of an array list? Get, yep, so that's get. And you've got to provide a number inside the round brackets there or, or, or a value, so we'll get I. So the first time through the loop, we'll get the one at location zero in the array list. Next time through, we'll get the location one, and location two, and so on. Okay, so you can see that changing from an array to an array list isn't a lot of work. It's, it's basically just change, changing the code to work with array lists. Okay, so left the old code there in case anybody wants it. Let's still compile, control one. Control two, you see everything's coming through great. Okay, so changing from an array to array list, really quite easy. Um, let's have a look at the other to do things I've got. I'll put those over in the other file as well. So we've done that one, change you to array list, we've added the to string. Let's add some more methods to the dogs class. So we'll add, add a string and an int. So we'll do that one first. Uh, we're going to get a string. We're going to search for a string. We're going to remove a string. And we're going to add a to string. Just, add, just to have some, have some fun. Okay, so add string and an int means we're adding something into the array list. So let's do that one. It looks like it's going to be not too bad. Who wants to have a go at adding that dog's name and that dog's age into our array list? One thing I might do just quickly, calling an array looks looks wrong to me. So I'll, I'll call it array list just so we're using the right terminology for that array list. Dog array list, dog array list, dog array list. That's all, just, just had to change it in a few places. So we want someone to write the code to add that, create a dog and add it to the array list with those details. That's part one. Part two is we want to get, get a dog. Search for dog name and um, okay, so the ad. We're going to push the same code as up above here. So let's cop copy one of those. But instead of hard coding default, we're going to use dog name. Instead of hard coding two, we're going to use dog age. Okay, so now we can call the add method outside of the class. Let's do that. Frankie and he's four, four. Oops. And round brackets. And we'll add Bella. B, she's, oops, that's an integer, not a double. And she's about six. 
So you can see we've called the constructor to add the three dogs, but we can also add any other dogs whenever we like from our main program. Okay, so we're not just limited to those three dogs anymore. Control one, control two, and you can see there's Frankie and Bella coming out as well. Okay, so with the ad, we've got an ad method so we can add data into our array list from outside of the class. Let's see if we can do the search. Move that one next. And we'll do the search the same way assignment two is doing the search. So we'll search for a dog name and we'll, we'll return an integer based on whether the data was found or not. Okay, so int index location equals minus one, and minus one usually indicates not found. And we'll loop through all our doggies and see if we can find a match. So we need a loop to loop through all the, all the data in the array list. Let's do that. We've got the loop down here. I'm just going to copy that. I want to go if something is equal to is equal to is that is that the right command to use equals if something is equal to something else and uh, and please don't take that that's the right thing please check that we want to do something and then do something else okay so we want to compare this dog name to the like to the dog name that's in the array list at that location can anybody write that code? And then when we do, we want to set something to indicate that it was found, and then we want to exit our loop. So what can we put there to exit our loop? Right at the end, we want to return something. See if you can fill in any of the blanks there. Okay, so how do we compare a dog name? So if dog name dot equals we want to get the one out of the array list. It's going to be array list dot something dot something. And if that equals true, then we found a match. So we want to get the we want to get the doggy out of the array list, and then we want to get it something to see if the names match. So what do we what do we put here? Okay, so we already found out how to get a doggy. Let's just get I. And how do we get the name of a doggy? We're going to come over here and call the, the get dog name method. Okay, so we, we're, we're looking up the dog's array list. We're getting the item out of the array, the first, the second, the third, and so on. And then we're getting the name for each dog in the array. And we're seeing if that matches what we're searching for. Okay. And um, we can indicate found. So index location is equal to I. Okay, so index location is going to tell us that we've found the match. And we want to exit the loop. So what we're going to do is violate this condition. An easy way to do that is just set i equal to i equals, and that means exit loop. The last thing we want to do is return the location of the dog. Okay. 
Now, maybe you don't want this method being called from outside the class. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's sort of a funny method to allow from outside the class where it's returning an integer to an index that you don't have access to. <laughs> so maybe we want to make that method private. Maybe we don't want it to be public. Okay, let's do the get method now. And the get method is going to call the, the, uh, the search method. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so let's do int index is equal to search for dog name. So we're searching for the dog name and we can go if index is greater than or equal to zero, then we found a match. Okay, if it's less than, if it's negative one, we didn't find a match. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, we're all good. We can, we can do something. We could return there if we wanted to. Uh, we're gonna return anyway. And we, what do we want to return? Do we want to return a dog? Or do we want to return a string? I'll suggest we'll, we'll return a string for now. Okay, so string results equals not found. Results string, I'll make it results string, just to make it a bit clearer. Okay. And then if index is greater than or equal to zero, then we can say results string equals dogs array list dot get i. Okay, so we're getting the, sorry, get index. So we're getting the matching dog out of the array list and we're converting that to a string because we're getting a string representation of it. But if you want to make that really clear, you can go dot two string just to make it really clear. Okay, so we're, we look, we're using the, the search dog name to, to, uh, to find out whether the dog's in the array list or not. And then using the index that was returned to look up that dog and convert it to a string. So we can, re we can return it to the calling method. Okay, so we're extending things a lot here. It's going way past where the tutorial question ended, which is a great thing to do. This is how you learn. You, you, when, you, when you finish your tutorial question, what can I add? What can I change? What can I do to, to make it better or to explore further? Okay, so control one, control two. That's still our code. We haven't done anything yet. Let's do a search as well. Or, or a get. So we're going to search for Frankie down here with dog stock get, see if we can find him. Okay, and there he is there. Dog is Frankie and the dog's age is, okay, so that's, that's working great. Let's do a search for. Let's do a search for big dog. Okay, who's not in our array. Okay, so let's do a search for someone to see, see if he's there. And you'll see big dog comes out as not found. Okay, so you can see with just some very simple code, we'll go through it again. With some very simple code, you can add searching into your array list as well, or into your array list class. Okay, so we've, we added a search method. And maybe we could improve that further by making that ignore case, ignore case, equals ignore case to make it so you can enter lowercase name and it still finds it if it's title case or whatever, equals ignore case. So this method here sets index location to minus one. 
lives through the through the dog array until it finds the first match. And when it finds a match, it says index, index location to the location of the doggy and then exits the loop. So we're comparing the dog name that was searched for to the one in the array list at each location in the array list. Okay. And then at the end, we return the index location. And we made that a private method because we didn't want this callable from outside the class. Okay, so make that private. And we've got a get method here to look up a dog. So get, and I can pass through a dog name. We set the result to not found. We call our private search method for that dog name. If the index is greater than equal to zero, we found a match. Did we find a match? And if we did, we can set the results to that dog. So using the index to look up the dog's list, array list, and converting that to a string, which means we're calling the two string method for the doggy. Okay. So get index returns a dog, and we're calling the two string method for that dog. Okay, now we did look at the array list class and um, array list. There are a whole heap of useful methods in here. Okay, so I'll leave it for you to research, but there could be ways to shorten this code down. Okay, there might be methods already built into the array list class to do this sort of stuff for us. There might be a suitable search method, but is it case sensitive? Okay, so I'll leave it for you guys to research. So to do. If there are built in methods, built in, built in methods to help. And I might put that at the very top. So it's not just, not just for that method there, but it's for other ones as well, maybe. So there might be methods in the array list class can save us work, in which case we should use those instead. So have a look and see. What about sorting? What about if we want to sort our array uh, array list? What about if we want to sort our array list? What will we do? I don't think we've, we haven't done that in class yet. We've sorted arrays, but not array lists. Okay. So let's add a sort method in. We must well do that as well. Public void sort. And we haven't done this code yet, so this is all brand new. <laughs> We could do a bubble sort and, and manually sort it by moving data around. Um, or we do that instead. Hmm. We might do that instead. We need a for loop. And we're changing things slightly. So I won't, I won't give you credit for this part. So we're going to go size minus one. Don't forget the size minus one. We want to compare the second last one to the last one. We don't want to blow our array size and go past. Okay. So we're going to do a bubble sort on our array. Um, um, Boolean swapped. If you remember that code, set it to false, set it to true. While swapped is equal to true. We're going to keep looping and do the inner loop and close it and set swap to false. This guy we looked at earlier in the, in, the, in the week. And if something matches or if something's out of order, we want to do the swap. Set swap to true. That's sort of the skeleton of our search, of, of, of our sort, okay? So we're gonna do a bubble sort. Just, just for the fun of it, there are, there are built-in sort functions for array lists. Uh, we could do this in, with one line of code, but it also needs a little bit more Java than we've done so far. So I can't really show you that just yet. Okay, so let's just do a bubble sort. We can do the bubble sort. So what are we swapping when we swap arrays in the array list? Okay, 
So we're swapping dogs, aren't we? A single dog. Okay, so dog temp is equal to um, array list dot get i. Then we want to set the, the one at the next location to that one. So we'll set, set that one to the next location. So we want to set, use a set command. Set the one at that location to, to the next one. Okay, so dogs get and dogs set. And then we want to set the original one, or set, set, set the original locations one back to, or set, set that locations one to the, uh, to the original one that was at the first location. So we're backing up the first one, setting the first one to the second one, and we want to restore the second one back with the first one's details. Okay, so it's dog set i plus one to the original, which is temp. And that should be it for the swapping. Now we're going to see if they're out of order. And we're going to, we'll do, a, we'll do a, a sort by name. Okay, so and we know how to get the name of the dog because we, we did it up here. Okay, so if dogs array list dot get i dot get dog name, and we're gonna, we want to say is greater than, but you can't do that for strings. So you've got to use compare to dot compare to. The next one. And if that's greater than zero, then they're out of order and we want to swap them. Okay, so it's, we, we're getting the, the name of the current dog and comparing it to the name of the next dog in the array. And if that's greater than zero, we want to do a swap. It's just the same code we looked at for employees and employee arrays and array of strings. It's the same code. We're getting the current one, storing it in temp, setting the current one to the next one, and setting the next one to the original value of the first one. Swapped. Swapped is true. And that should be it. We should be pretty good to go now. Control one. And there it is. Swapped. Ah, swapped. There we go. So it's just the same code we looked at in class, where we swapped an array of em employees. It's just the same code, just converted to work for array lists. So we got get and set, okay, instead of equals. And don't forget the size minus one. That's very important, like I said in class. You don't want to blow your array size. You, your Java will just crash, but I'm not sure you don't do it. Let's call sort as well. We'll call it down here in our main program. Sort. Dogs.sort. And then we'll display the dogs again. After sort. Okay, so we'll display them originally, and then we'll display them after the sort. Control one, control two. And you can see here they were just all random in the array, and here they're sorted by name. Okay, and if you want it to be a descending, that's an ascending sort. Remember, if you want to make it a descending sort, you could just change that to a less than. If you want to sort by the dog age instead of the dog name, you could just say, get dog age, get dog age. Away you go. Just like we did in, in, in the lecture class. So we've added a bit more in here. So I've added the, the add method, the get method and the search method. Um, we could add to string and remove as well. We might as well, Look, it's a good thing to do. And we've also added sort. We're going to sort method. Let's now add a remove method to remove the dog if we find it. Okay, so let's do that. Sort, and I would put that down here with, I would call that a, sort, sort's really a mutator method as well. It's changing class data. Search is a accessor method. Get is an accessor method. Adds a mutator method, it's changing class data. So we might put all our mutators together. 
and all our accesses together. So get search sort. So these are the mutators. These are their accesses. Just so things are organized basically. And again, you could sort these alphabetically if you wanted to. <laughs> Or put all your private ones first or whatever you want to do, just as long as they have some sort of order. Uh, mutators, so add and sort of mutators, display as a accessor. So I'll put that up there with the, with the accessors. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now we want to add a remove method. We want to pass in a dog name. We could also pass in a dog age if we want to and search, sort for both. So search for both. And we want to return a Boolean of whether the remove was successful or not. Okay, so Boolean. Set it to false to start off with. Set it to true when we actually do the remove. So we want to find if that dog name exists in the array, which we've got a method for that already. It's our search. Search method up here. There it is, our search method. And we call that in our dogs. In our, in our get method, so let's use that. Remove. Okay, so we're searching for dog name using our search method. If the index is greater than equal to zero, we found a match. So what we, want, what we now want to do is do the remove of our of our dog. So we're going to type some sort of method like remove or delete. Okay, so let's look in the in the array list help and see if we can find a method. So clear clears everything. That's no good. We don't want to delete everything. Is there a delete method? So there's nothing ever seen between C and D, C and E. So there's no delete method. So let's get out of remove. And you can see there's a remove that removes an index. So it removes an object at that index. So the remove method's here. Let's use that. Dot remove index. Okay. So we remove the doggy. Let's now set removed to true. And don't forget to return that what the value that removed was. Boolean method there. Take the dog. Let's call. Let's call remove here. And whenever we remove DIFA, DIFA died. <laughs> oh, I can't say that. DIFA went to another home, so we don't have DIFA anymore. Okay, so we'll remove DIFA from our array list. Control one, control two. And you can see DIFA is not there anymore. Okay, so we created the dogs, which initialized them to those three dogs. We added Bella and Frankie, and then we removed Difa. So Difa doesn't appear in any of our lists anymore. Okay, so now we've got a remove method as well. Are there any questions so far on anything we've done? The get, the search? the display, the add, the sort, or the remove. This is probably the trickiest code we've seen, but we're just using the array list methods here. We're using get to get the object and set with an index to change the object of that location. That's probably the trickiest code we've seen. But it's just doing that same code we looked at in the lecture. We're just converting it into a list notation. Okay, so the only one I suggested, other one I suggest we had was two string. I might leave that for an exercise for your for you to do. So dogs dot two string. Let's now move our main method to another class, dog tester. 
So let's do that. New file, public plus dogs tester. Dogs tester with the Java, that should be fine. Dogs tester with a Java, that's fine. Let's move our main method across. Okay, so now there's no now there's no main in our in our dogs class. There's no main in our dog class. So the main method is now in our dog tester. So now we've got a three class project. We've got the data class, we've got the array class, and we've got the, the main user interface class, which is our just our basic console application. It's only displaying data at the moment. We've got no user input, but we could change it so you're getting scanner input or swing dialogue input. And uh, we could be doing all sorts of things in here to add dogs to the, until the user doesn't want to enter any more dogs and, and sorting dogs and all that sort of stuff. So searching for dogs until the user doesn't want to search anymore. All using the same the previous code we've looked at in prior examples in lectures and tutes. Okay, so we could add a whole lot of stuff in here. But let's do a compile, control one, and run it, make sure it still works and everything's working great. Okay, so we've now got a three, we've now got a three, a three class project. So it's almost a mini database. Okay. So uh, if we added save to file, load from file, we'd be almost there. We'd almost have a mini dogs database on our hands. Okay, so uh, we've got search and, and sort and all sorts of things we could add. Okay. So are there any questions on what we've done so far for the dogs or dog or dog tester? Any questions so far? Everyone okay? Any confusion? Okay, so this is a setup we've got. We've got the dog tester, which is our UI, it's our basic console app. We've got the dogs array, and we've got the dog data class. So that's the array class, and that's the data class. So some questions for you, and you can answer in the chat window if you like. Where does the data for a dog reside? Which class is responsible for the data for a dog? Anybody? Hello? <laughs> Anybody there? So where does the data for a single dog reside? Which class has it? Ah, beautiful, thanks Byron. So Byron said the dog class and he's exactly right. Okay, so the dog class is responsible for keeping the data for a dog. Okay, so. Yeah, so it's responsible for that. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Sanjin's just telling me his internet connection's unstable. Yeah, sorry, Sanjin, you're okay. Um, we got we got eight people in the class, though. So there's um, a few there to answer. But um, um, where does the array where does the array reside? In the dogs. Thank you, Warren. Saying the dogs. Perfect, okay, so they're not trick questions. Now we're coming on to the slightly trickier ones. Okay, so if validation rules had to be added for dog name and dog age, where would these be added? In other words, which class would be responsible for, for validating the dog data? Perfect, but which class, Byron? The dog, perfect. Okay, so it would be the dog class that you, where, you, where you would add the validation and it would be the setter and the constructors. The setters and the constructors is where you'd want to add that validation. Later on, if we had a third or a fourth Java class, I could show you how you could make it so it's just in one method, the validation code. But we haven't, haven't done enough Java yet, even though it's really not that hard. I don't want to confuse things. I don't want to cover too much. But I just want you to get you thinking about these things because these things percolate 
and then the following class will build on things more. Okay, so, so it's in the setters and constructors of the dog class. So is there any validation needed? That's where it goes. It goes in the data, it goes in the class that owns the data. It goes in the class that's responsible for the data. Okay, so the dog class. If error messages needed to be displayed to the user for any reason, for any validation errors, which class would be responsible for displaying these errors? And be very careful here, this is a trick question. So which class is responsible for displaying our user interface? So which class should display the error? This, the dog class should generate the error, but which class should display it? The main program, exactly right. So our dog tester class. That's right, Sanjin, thank you. Okay, so that's dog tester. Okay, so um, you, you might think, well, for what we're doing at this stage, it would probably be okay to do the validation and the error messages all from the dog class. Okay. Um, but imagine we're writing those error messages out to the console screen. And then somebody comes along later on and develops a GUI of our, of our dog class and our dogs class. And in a GUI, you can't see the console screen. There's no console screen. It's just all the GUI components. So you could be generating error messages, putting them out to the console screen, and the user will never see them. <laughs> okay. So, um, so that's why the user interface class, whether it's a console app, or a GUI, which we're doing next week. We're doing the fun stuff, the GUI stuff next week. That should be responsible for displaying the error messages. Okay, because it knows where to display them. Console screen. Between dialogue. A label on the user interface. So, so these, the, 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 it's a user interface class that knows where to display it. Okay, so it should be responsible for displaying error messages. The dog class might generate error message. But ideally, it should not display it. It, it doesn't know where it's running. It could be running in a, user, in a GUI application. And if it's writing error messages out to the console screen, the user's never going to see them. Okay, so this is just something I want, to, I want you to start thinking about for now. This is where we're heading. Okay, we're, building, we're now building multi-class projects where we've got a data class, an arrays class, and a user interface class. Okay, so you've got to start thinking about these sorts of topics. What's responsible for what? Where should this code go? Okay, and you've got to group things locally. I'm just, just getting you to think about these things at this stage. Next week, we'll think about it some more, and the week after some more, and the week after some more. And in the follow-on class, follow class, we'll think about it even more, okay? So like I said last week, these things are great big iceberg topics, okay? And we're only looking at the very top of the iceberg when we look at these things now. And next class, ne next term, and, and in future weeks, we'll slowly reveal more of the iceberg, okay? But really, for, for nearly all of these topics, we need five or six Java courses to even get close to revealing most of the iceberg. They're all huge topics. Okay, there's a lot of complexity and a lot of things to think about. And uh, you, might think things, you might think things are simple, uh, but when we reveal more layers of the onion and more layers of the iceberg, you realize that uh, there's lots, a lot to think about. Okay, so the console class might, or the dog, the dog class, or the dogs class might generate error messages. In other words, generate the text of the error message or indicate that an error has gone wrong. Or okay. But it's really the user interface class that's responsible for realizing that an error has happened and displaying the error message. It's only, only it knows where it's running. Okay. These, these classes here, they don't have a clue whether they're running in a console app or a, or a, um, or a GUI app or a, a web app or anything like that. 
Okay. Uh, if we needed to save dog data to file or load dog data from, to, from file, where will we put the save and the load methods? Where will, we, where will we put the save and the load methods? Okay, we call them from the main, but where will we put the actual code that writes out the data and, 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 and loads back in the data when we run the program again? So where would that go? So what data knows, what, what, uh, what class knows about the array, in other words? So it's a class that stores the data, that knows about the data, that's responsible for the data. Okay, so it's the dogs class. So it should have the save and the load methods in it because only it has access to the data that's in the array. Okay. So that class is responsible for the array of dogs data. So, or dog data, if you want to, array of dog data. So it's responsible for saving it and loading it to, uh, saving it to file and loading it from file, or saving it to a database, loading it from a database. And where will we do that? Okay, so if we're going to add a save method in here, where will we call it? And I'd suggest we call the load method here. The load would be called here. Okay. And where would the save method be called? Well, I would probably I would probably add a save method in here as a accessor because it's not changing any class data; it's just saving it a file. And then I'd probably have a button on the user interface where the user could click save whenever they wanted to, or when the user interface exits, we can. I'll show you how to um, make it so that you can have it so it automatically runs like a save method. Okay, so ideally the user interface should have the save button or know when it's exiting and call a save method in the dogs class. Okay, so the code for the actual load and save would be in the dogs class, but the calling might be from outside. So the methods could be called from outside of the of the dogs class, you know, from the user interface class. When he clicks those or saves buttons, but the actual code will be save and load definitely belongs in the dogs class. So we're just, I'm get, just getting you to keep things in mind here as we're moving forward. Where should code go? How should it be, how should it be laid out? What's responsible for what? Okay, so you keep these things very clearly in mind. Otherwise you can easily end up with a mess. <laughs> you can very, very, very easily end up with a hell of a mess. Okay, especially when we start moving into more classes and more whatever. Okay, so. One final question for you to think about. If we change from a console app to a GUI app, to a web app. Now we haven't done any of these yet. We've only done console apps so far. And if you want to count the ones where you display swing dialogues as GUI apps, they're not really, they're not really GUI apps. They're really console apps with a, a GUI dialog tacked tack on. Okay, but if you want to move from a console app to a GUI app or a web app, what classes would need to change? Which of these classes would need to change if we move to a GUI app or a console app or a web app? Anybody got a guess? Okay, and the answer is this one. Whatever that, whatever that user interface class is called, dog tester, uh, that's the one that's got to change. So if we wanted to rewrite this whole application as a GUI application, and we're going to do that next week <laughs> in the tube, then uh, all we need to change is our dog tester class. Instead of 
using the console screen. We're going to make it so it uses labels and buttons and that sort of thing. Okay, so that this all lead, this is all leading into what's happening next week. Okay, it's quiet in chat land. We've got eight, eight, eight people still here, but it's very quiet in chat land. I think we're missing Wayne. Wayne needs to come along more often. Well, he's only missed one class. But. Okay, so we're missing Wayne. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's the beauty of it. If we move to a, if we move to a GUI or a web app, these, these classes here shouldn't need to change. Okay, so they're 100% reusable no matter what we do. It's only the user interface class that needs to change. Where it's getting the data from, where it's displaying the results to, that's the user interface class. That's all it needs to know about. Okay, and none of these classes down here should care what the user interface is. They shouldn't care whether they're running on a console screen or a GUI or a web or whatever. They shouldn't care at all. They should just work no matter what. Okay, so that's where we're, that's where we're heading. Each class has got a certain responsibility and it doesn't mix and match. So Byron's just written a good question here. And uh, let's just put that in. So Byron, wouldn't we have to change dog and dog slightly to move from console input to GUI input? No. Okay, so now we're, now we're in a dog's class. We don't have a scanner object declared in here. There's no scanner object, okay. I've got, the, I've got the add method, which, which, which we can call from outside the class. Um, so if we need to add dogs to our array, we can call that. If we need to remove dogs, we can call the remove. Okay. But there's nothing in here that uses scanner input. There's nothing in here that displays anything to the console screen. Okay. There's no messages going out to the console screen. And same in dog. There's no scanner in here. There's nothing displaying to the console screen. We're returning some strings, but we're not displaying anything to the user interface. Okay, so, so dog and dogs classes, the two basic classes, they're completely user interface agnostic. They don't care what, you, what the user interface is. Only one class should know about the user interface and that's the dog tester or whatever you call it, dog, dog UI, whatever you call that class. Okay, so it's, it's, it's getting, it's displaying user input. If we had a scanner, it would be declared in here and be getting user input in here and be calling the add and remove methods to add dogs and remove dogs and search for dogs and whatever. Okay, so this is the only class that knows about the user interface. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Every, every class has got a, a responsibility. And when you start mixing and matching responsibilities, that's when you get into a world of hurt. <laughs> okay, you gotta keep things really clear. Don't worry about it too much yet. We'll, we're, gonna do, we're gonna extend this greatly next week. Okay, we're gonna slap a GUI, I, I call it slapping a GUI on it. We're gonna make a, a, a dog GUI where we got a nice got dog GUI. We'll have buttons to adding and buttons to removing and buttons to searching. And uh, we'll take it from there. So we spent a lot of time on this class, on this uh, example, because we've been, whoops, because we've been uh, extending things so far. But that's okay. That's good to do. We've learned a lot. Um, so we've done question two and we've done way, way, way more than question two. Let's look about question three. Question three, create an array list test class with a main method and create an array list of strings called names. Add Tom, Dick and Harry to the array list. Print them out in a loop. Remove Dick from the list. Insert John at the beginning and use the traditional counter control loop. And we'll also use a, a for each loop if you want to. But this question here seems really basic compared to what we've just done. And we've done that in class already, but we can do it again quickly if you like. Array list test. Do it quickly. Files. I didn't think we'd do it, so I haven't even got an, a, a template prepared for us. Um, public class array list test. Test.java. Array list test of Java, beautiful. We need a main method. I'll grab it out of dog tester. Okay. So 
That's it. Let's just copy it over. Before we move on, before we move on from that dog's that dog's question, are there any questions on dog or dogs or the dog tester classes? Are there any, any questions, any confusion? Okay, so it's really important you have a good look at these before next week's class. Make sure you understand everything because we're going to be building a GUI on it. So things are going to move pretty quickly. But are there any questions before we move on? Anything in dogs? Anything, any confusion anywhere? Anything, anything you're not sure of? So there's a couple of to-dos there. And also add some for uh, week 11 when we do this, the file IO. It'd be a good thing to come back and add the save and the load in as well. main uh, console app or the constructor. So something you can do, think about in the future if you want to come back and look at this again, because we're, we're going to be adding a GUI to this dogs uh, next week. Okay, so no questions there. Let's do this one quickly, just this array, array tester one. <clears throat> It's a very, very, very simple question, really, for the scheme of things. You guys will be able to do this, no worries at all, I reckon. So create an array list test class within the main method, create an array list. So we're going to create an array list. If anyone can fill in the code, please do. If anyone wants to give the declaration, please do. Uh, and we want to add the names Tom, Dick, or Harry. If anyone wants to do that, they can. Uh, Use an enhanced for loop to print the names. <laughs> oh, Andrew, Andrew's done a lot nearly already. Okay, he's, I think he's done a lot. Okay, um, let's just have a look. Good on you, Andrew, thank you for that. Okay, so we've got the, the, the array list being declared. We're adding Tom, Dick and Harry, perfect. We're using an enhanced for loop, which is this little chap here for string name in the, in the name array list, which is perfect. Print them out to the screen. And then it says remove Dick, and Dick was item one. Add George and add John to the start, and then print out the updated list. That's perfect. Thank you, Andrew. You've done very well there. Super fast fingers. Um, Let's just make sure. So we've got the creation going on here. We've got the display here. We've got the add names here. ABC, but remove Dick. If anyone can think of anything, any better ways to do these things, or it's got alternate answers, please, please uh, speak up. We can insert John, or add George. Oh, and add George, right? I add George. Yep. Insert John at the beginning and use a traditional for loop to do the updated list. You see my indentation's a bit messy, so I'll just pull it all over to the left. Shift, 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 shift tabs, tab, tab, push it back over. And uh, that's looking pretty good. And we don't need that anymore. So you can see a couple of, couple of points here. Uh, Andrew's, this is all thanks to Andrew. Andrew, 
who's used a list object here. So you're saying list string equals new array list. Okay, and that's quite okay. It's just not syntax we've used in class yet. Okay, so um, list is actually an abstract class. You can actually create objects of it directly. So you can't say list equals new lists. That's why you say you've got to say equals new array list or new something else. But for now, just to keep it, just to keep it simple, we might just make it array list, array list, just not to confuse anyone. But you might see that syntax in the textbook and it's quite okay to just say list. Okay, so we need to do an import for array list. So import java.util.star. That brings in the array list and all sorts of other things. Uh, array list string. You can leave the string out there if you want to. That's quite okay for Java 7 onwards. We're using Java. I'm using Java 8 here. So that's okay. But if you're before Java 7, you have to put the string there as well. But that's quite okay to do that. Tom, Dick, and Harry is fine. Hence, enhance for it to print out the names. That's perfect. Remove one. Can we do that another way? Can we do it without knowing that Dick's at index location one in the list? Let's have a look at our help. So help. And you'll see there. We've got the remove and the index. We've also got the remove and the object. Okay. So you can actually say, instead of remove one, because that requires us knowing that Dick's at index location one, you can say name.remove Dick. Which is probably a better answer especially if your list is changing. Okay. Um, adding George, that's fine. That's a, that adds George to the end of the list. This is adding John at the start of the list. So everything else is shuffling down. Tom and someone shuffling, shuffling down. And then we'll display the updated list. Control one, control two, and everything's great. So there's the updated list, John, Tom, Harry, and George. Okay, so Dick's gone and George is at the end and John's inserted at the start. Still got seven people, one person left. Um, that's okay. Okay, so are there any questions on the array list tester? Any questions there? What about if you want to what about if you want to erase the array list? In other words, delete everything out of it. Is there a command for that? Do you remember the command? We just mentioned it briefly. Clear, perfect, Andrew, yep. Clear, name.clear. That uh, erases all items in the array list. They're the main methods you'll use. So size, clear, remove, add. Uh, add at a certain location or whatever. And there's also this, the set command. If you want to overwrite something that's already in the list, you can replace it with something else. And that works for strings, employees, dogs, whatever. So 145, we're coming to the end. There are some short answer questions there in the textbook. And there are some suggested textbook questions as well. The mean median's a fairly sort of simple question. Um, it's all about finding um, the middle value of an array and the average of an array. So it's just counting up the values, dividing by whatever, totaling up the values and dividing whatever. And the median is the middle value, so. Um, I think that's sort of pretty basic for you guys now. Have a go anyway. If any problems, we'll talk about it next week. Uh, the much better question for you to sink your teeth in is a salesperson question. So create a, create a class called salesperson. And, a, and, uh, and we did that last week. Okay. So I'll just, grab the, I'll just grab the same class we did last week, salesperson. And the changes is to modify the... Uh, the, the, the the main method or the, the, the tester class, so that each salesperson has a successive ID number, 111 through 120, and a sales value that ranges from 25,000 to 70,000.
increasing by 5,000. So just changing the data when you create the salespeople. Save the sales demo salesperson too. So we, we actually did this last week, the salesperson class. Clears an array of 10 salespeople, sets each ID to 9999 and sales value to zero. Display the 10 salesperson objects, save the, file, save the files as those and those, and then modify them with these ranges of values. So, I think you'll be okay with that one. That's um, no, no, nowhere near as hard as what we're doing with the dogs class. So see how you go. Uh, any questions, that we'll, we can tackle them next week. So next week's our week on GUIs, which I'm hoping you'll, you'll really enjoy. So next week, so GUI development. So we'll be doing things like labels and buttons and menus, checkboxes and uh, data entry boxes. Big, big fields where we can display multi-line results called text fields. And, uh, and so on. We're doing all that sort of stuff next week and we'll be, be building nice GUI applications. So from next week onwards, we'll be doing GUI stuff. Okay. And, uh, I'll try and make sure we do something each week so that even when we're doing the file IO week, we'll make it so you can click a button and it'll save it to file, click a button and it will load it back from file. Okay. But that's all for this week. We're, we're, we're almost out of time. Any questions before we head off? Any questions on the the short answers or the dogs or the dog or the dog tester, um, the array list test. Any questions anywhere? Okay, so have a good look over the code, particularly dog tester, dogs and dog, because we're building on that next week. That's what that's going to be the main thing we do in the tute is to slap a GUI on that dog and dog dogs array classes. So the dog array and the dog's array. We'll slap a GUI on that. And, uh, and we'll build an app where you can click an add button to add a dog, click a search button to search for a dog, click a delete button to delete a dog, and uh, all those sort of things. Okay, down to six people. So it's me and five others. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. Uh, have a good weekend and make sure you get lots of practice. <laughs> lots of practice. Okay. Thanks everyone. Special thanks to Andrew and uh, and Byron, Andrew Byron and, and uh, were, the, were the main two that uh, typed in lots of answers. So thanks Andrew and Byron. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.